In this tutorial, we will use Relens within Scratch from Assimilate, and the input and output have different resolutions. We learned how to handle that in the previous tutorial called Setting Up Our Plugins in Scratch. We will briefly go through those steps when setting up these examples, so if you need a more thorough overview of the basics, you should go back and watch that tutorial. In this first example, we will start with some super wide fisheye footage we shot on a Panasonic GH5 with an Intompano lens. The mount will change the size of the image circle. At that resolution, the MP4 video recorded uses H.265 encoding, as that's way above 4K video. We will use the Reland Superfish plugin for the first example, and we'll be animating a camera move in post. The Superfish effect allows you to rotate and zoom on video captured with a fisheye, allowing a lot of post freedom by reframing in post, making sure you don't miss any of the action. The first step is to make a project that's the size of our desired output. We select Create New to create a new project and enter the project name and we select Create. We set the project resolution to 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate to 29.97. That's the frame rate of our source video. We enter the project. Now we will load our source clip and insert it on the timeline. We'll start by selecting Load Clips under Media and select the fisheye footage and select Open. We can deposit the clip node on the first slot. Next, we create a filler node. This is how we need to set up our project since the input and output have different resolutions. When creating the filler, it automatically inherits the project properties, so it becomes our render canvas. We deposit the filler node in the first slot below our fisheye footage. Without selecting either node, right-click within the proper timeline slot and select Editor. Now, in the Versions tab on the right side, you can see both nodes. We will select the source footage and note the source out value. Now we can select the filler node and set the out value to be the same as the clip. We can select the media button and we can verify that the filler nodes width and height are the desired output resolution and frame rate, which should also be the same as the project. Now we need to add the effect. We right click anywhere in the slot and select matrix. We make sure the filler node is selected on the right side staging area. Now we can select the color frame button. The effects button should be enabled now, so we'll select it and we see the effects. We can select Reland Superfish by double clicking to apply or select apply selection. The plugin parameters should be visible now and we can select the inputs on the left. We select the Get Color Source tab in the center area and drag our clip node into the Get Color Source area to connect it. At this point, we can verify that the plugin is correctly set up with the filler node and the clip as inputs by clicking on the sources and clicking on the hierarchy drawing just above it. This shows you a hierarchical view of the plugin where you should see the clip and the filler node as its inputs. Now the Reland Superfish button has replaced the color frame, so we select that to set up the parameters. We will set the method to Equisolid and set Field of View to 250, since we know the Field of View is 250. Next we can set the View Mode to Set Circle over Source, and can zoom out a little to see the edges of the circle with the controls under the viewer. Now we adjust the radius by dragging the boundary line, or we can simply type into the radius box until it fits. 0 0.427 works well here. What we're doing here is telling the software where the center of the lens projection is and where the edge of our field of view is. Okay, now we're ready to start. You notice that we shot with the lens facing up towards the sky. This is why you only see the sky at first. There's a bit of dirt there on the lens, but it doesn't matter as we'll use only a donut shape, if you like, from that part of the sphere. The first step when we don't shoot straightforward looking as we would do with a normal camera is to adjust the orientation to move the sphere we captured so we're looking forward. We need to do this so that animating the rotation is then easier. Essentially we're aligning the rotation axis so when panning 
we can only use one parameter to set a key position. I'll make orientation x minus 90 to rotate the view so we're forward facing and set orientation y to minus 135. This is where my starting position will be. If the lens was a, at a 45 degree angle, we would set orientation to minus 45. You can adjust by eye so the horizon is straight. So let's spin around to see. We can set up to animate the rotation and we can play with the focal length as well to change the zoom of our virtual camera. Also, we'll make the virtual camera motion so the cars that pass are actually in the frame. Now we want to process that animation. We go to Construct and then Outputs and add a new output. I select, for example, a ProRes encoder, which is supported by Scratch and Windows, and Mac. I select the output node and select Process. Now let's take a look at that animation. There are a few problems here. First at the beginning, we'll see the edge of the image circle. This is because the image is cut horizontally with the lens mount we have. It's maybe 220 degrees vertically. And also, we're too high when we face the hill as we only see the car roof. The camera motion is doing two 360 rotations, and it's a bit too fast. If you make a fast camera motion like that, we recommend you use Real Smart Motion Blur so you don't get strobing when playing back. Now we can go back to the effects control and adjust our rotation and the focal length values over time to fix our animation. We can also make a few more adjustments. As you zoom in, it might be useful to do a bit of sharpening. Note, this is not your regular sharpen. The amount of sharpening will be related to how much the image is locally stretched by the projection and of course the source material resolution. Similarly, when you zoom out, you have the option to smooth the result a bit using the mip map smoothing. Again, different parts of the image will be more or less blurred as a result, depending on the net transform projection. Another feature that's useful to know when going to rectilinear is the unflattened slider. If you have a wide field of view, sometimes the edges will be overstretched. This would also happen with a wide angle lens and why there are very few rectilinear lenses that will go over 100 degrees field of view. Here I'm going to lower the focal length so it's clear. Then I adjust the unflattened slider so the edges look better. You've just seen a few of the relens and scratch features. Watch part two for a few more.